Our objectives for this lesson are the following. Define logarithms, convert logarithmic form to exponential form and vice versa, and evaluate logarithms. This is what you call logarithmic function. Y, B, and X are constants, where B is greater than 0 but not equal to 1, and X is greater than 0. This is read as y is equal to the logarithm of x to the base b, or y is equal to log base b of x. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is equal to 16. This is equivalent to 2 raised to 4 is equal to 16. 2 is the base, while 4 is the exponent. The exponent tells how many times the base is multiplied by itself. So 1, 2, 3, 4. That is why our exponent is 4. This expression is also equivalent to this. The logarithm of 16 to the base 2 is equal to 4. Notice that the answer here, which is 4, is the exponent in this form. So it means the logarithm tells us what the exponent is. It answers the question how many times the base is multiplied by itself. So, logarithm is the exponent which a base must be raised to give another number. You notice that there is a relationship between exponential and logarithmic form. But what is the relationship? They are actually inverses of one another. This is the logarithmic form, while this is the exponential form. In both logarithmic and exponential, b is your base. In the logarithmic form, y is the answer. In exponential form, y is the exponent. This means that the logarithm is actually an exponent. In the logarithmic form, x here cannot be negative. Why? Because there is no base raised to any number that will give you a negative number. So, x cannot be negative. However, in the logarithmic form, the answer can be negative. Why? Because it is possible to have a negative exponent. Let us convert logarithmic form to exponential form. Here's the technique. You start with b, and then you raise it to y. So you have b raised to y. And then go back to x equals x. That's it. Let's have another one. So 8 raised to 2 equals 64. One more. 9 raised to 1 equals 9. Another one. 7 raised to 0 equals 1. One more. 1 half raised to negative 5. Oh, be careful here. You should enclose it in parentheses. Otherwise, only 1 is raised to negative 5 equals 25. Last one. 7 raised to negative 1 half equals 1 over a square root of 7. This time, let's have exponential form to logarithmic form. First, you write the log. Next, your base in exponential is also your base in the logarithmic form. Your answer in the exponential becomes your number here. And your exponent becomes the answer. Remember that the answer to the logarithm is actually the exponent. And to check, let us convert logarithmic to exponential. So we start with b raised to y. So we have b raised to y. Then go back to x equals x. Let's have another one. So first, write the log. Copy the base. Your answer becomes the number here. And your exponent becomes the answer. One more. Write the log. Copy the base. The answer in exponential becomes your number here in logarithmic. And your exponent becomes the answer. Another one. Write the log. Copy the base. Copy the answer in exponential. 
and your answer is the exponent. Another one, write the log, copy the base, copy the answer in exponential, and your answer is the exponent. Last one, write the log, copy the base, copy the answer in exponential, and your answer is the exponent. Next, we have what we call common logarithms. These are logarithms with base 10. The base 10 is usually omitted when writing common logarithms. So when you see log of x, it is equivalent to the logarithm of x to the base 10. So whenever there is no base, it is understood that the base of that is 10. That is common logarithms. Then we also have natural logarithms. Logarithms with base e. E is an irrational number approximately equal to 2.71828. It is denoted by ln, read as loan. So, whenever you see logarithm of x to the base e, that is also equivalent to loan x. Or, when you see loan x, it means it is a logarithm whose base is e. Kaya, pag ikaw na loge, Mag-loan ka. This time, let us evaluate logarithms. Number 1. Since you want to know the value of this, then you equate this to x. Then, let us convert the logarithmic form into exponential form. So, we'll start with the base, then raise to an exponent. So, we have 2 raised to x equals 32. From what we have learned in exponential equation, we have to make our bases the same. So, I'll express 32 as 2 to the fifth power. Now that my bases are the same, I can ignore the bases and equate the exponents. So, x is equal to 5. If you wish to check your answer, then you substitute the value of x here. So, 2 raised to 5 is equal to 32. Is it? 2 raised to 5 is 32. So, 32 is equal to 32. Check. Therefore, our answer is correct. Next one. So, let us equate this to x. And then, let us convert this into exponential form. So, we have 9 raised to x is equal to 729. And then, let us express 729 into a power whose base is 9. And 729 is equal to 9 cubed. Now, we can drop the bases and equate the exponents. So, x is equal to 3. You do the checking. Another one. Equate this to x. Convert this into exponential. So, we have 8 raised to x is equal to 8. And then, the exponent here is 1. So, it means our x is equal to 1. One more. Equate this to x. Convert this to exponential, 6 raised to x is equal to 1. Now, to what number are you going to raise 6 to make the answer equal to 1? What would be the exponent that will give you an answer of 1? That is 0. Isn't it that any number except 0 raised to 0 is equal to 1? So, our answer x equals 0 is correct. Another example. So, again, let us equate this to x and then convert this into exponential form. So, we have 1 fourth raised to x is equal to 64. Remember to enclose in a parenthesis so that both 1 and 4 are raised to x. The exponent of 4 here is 1. And if I am going to bring my denominator up, that positive 1 will become negative 1. Then copy x equals 64. Simplifying this side, I'll just have to multiply my exponents. So negative 1 times x is negative x. So 4 raised to negative x. And then I'll express 64 as 4 cubed. Now my bases are the same. So, I can equate the exponents. So, negative x is equal to 3. And then, I'll divide both sides by negative 1. Negative x divided by negative 1 is positive x. 3 divided by negative 1 is negative 3. 
Another one. Again, let us equate this to x and convert it into exponential form. So my base is 5. So 5 raised to x is equal to 1 over square root of 5. A square root of 5 means 5 raised to 1 half. And then I'm going to bring my denominator up. So this 1 half will become negative. My bases are now the same. So x is equal to negative 1 half. Another one, equate this to x, convert this to exponential form, 0 0.5 raised to x is equal to 64. I'll make 0.5 1 half. So 1 half raised to x is equal to 64. Like what I did in example number 5, I'm going to bring up my denominator. So this will become 2 raised to negative 1. Copy x, and then I'll express 64 as 2 to the 6th power. So this will become 2 raised to negative x equals 2 raised to 6. Now I'll be having negative x is equal to 6. Like what I did in number 5, so x is equal to negative 6. Let's have some more. So again, let's equate this to x and then convert this into exponential form. So my base here is 4. So 4 raised to x is equal to 1 over 256. And then I'll bring up 256. So it will become 256 raised to negative 1. And then I'll express 256 as 4 to the 4th power. Simplifying this, this will become 4 times negative 1. So I have 4 raised to negative 4. Now my bases are the same. So x is equal to negative 4. Next one. Equate this to x, and then my base is 5 over 4, so 5 over 4 raised to x is equal to 125 over 64. And then I'll express 125 as 5 cubed and 64 as 4 cubed. Now, laws of exponents, since my exponents are the same, I can make it 5 over 4 both raised to positive 3. My bases are the same, so I can equate the exponents. x is equal to 3. One more. Equate this to x. So what again is the number here if there is no base written? That is 10. So I have 10 raised to x is equal to 100. And then I'll express 100 as 10 squared. Since my bases are now the same, equate the exponents. x is equal to 2. I still have some space here, so let's have one more. In this example, the base is unknown. So how are we going to solve it? Let us convert this into exponential form. So x raised to the second power is equal to 16. Now, I'll express 16 as 4 squared, or it could also be negative 4 squared. So positive and negative 4 squared. Now my exponents are the same. It follows that my bases are equal. So I could have positive 4 or negative 4. But remember, the value of your base should be greater than 0 but not equal to 1. So we cannot consider negative 4. So our x is equal to 4. It's time to check your understanding. Pause this video for more time. Let us answer. Convert this into exponential form. So we have 6 raised to 2 is equal to 36. Then remember natural logarithm. It is a logarithm whose base is e. So e raised to y is equal to 3. Now for number 3, so you have to write the log. 
copy the base, and then copy the answer in exponential form, and then your answer is the exponent. Number four, so you have to write the log, copy the base, and then copy your answer in the exponential form. Remember to enclose it in parentheses, and then your answer is the exponent. Letter C, let us evaluate the following. So this is common logarithm. Since there is no base written here, then the base here is 10. Now, I'll give you a technique. For common logarithms and the numbers involved are only 0 and 1, you can simply move the decimal point until you reach here. If it is going to the right, then it is negative. So you have 1, 2, 3. So the answer here is negative 3. For number 6, since 243 is 3 to the fifth power, the exponent there is 5, therefore the answer is 5. Gets?